So we thought the Maria Rutenberg v. Twitter case was over. Here it is in the Northern District of California. And on April 9th, we got the order dismissing the case for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. But then the plaintiff, Maria Rutenberg, filed a request for leave to file a second amended complaint. You might recall from Rule 15, you get one free amendment to your, your case, but in all other cases, you have to have permission from the opposing party or the judge. And I'm assuming the opposing party did not give them permission. So they now have to get permission from the judge. So April 21st, motion for leave to file a second amended complaint. Then the opposition, so there you go, they didn't give permission, opposition to filing a second amended complaint, a reply, and then now we have the order denying a motion for leave to file a second amended complaint and a judgment. So let's take a quick look at the motion for the second amended complaint, which it's long, but it doesn't, but we don't need to go over it in great detail. I just like to see what they think the basis for a second amended complaint is. If you recall, and you don't want to watch the other video, this was the Trump Twitter ban lawsuit where Maria Rutenberg is trying to apply the Knight First Amendment Institute case that said that public officials can't simultaneously use Twitter to make official proclamations to do government business and also block constituents. They probably can block people who aren't constituents, but it was Trump. So any American citizen really, or even American resident, I, you know, this, I'm assuming that it was citizens that was tested in the case, but Trump can't block constituents on Twitter. And there was a piece of controversy around this, which was kind of a non-controversy. A lot of individuals, a lot of argument was made on Twitter and other platforms and YouTube and my videos and things too, that if Trump can't block people, that means Twitter can't block people. And that's not true. And there's a very clear distinction about who the actor is. The president or former president is the state actor, the actor on behalf of the government, the state actor, we call it. It's called the state action doctrine. The only way that Twitter could become a state actor as a private entity would be if they were acting on behalf of the government as well. And they are not acting on behalf of the government. That's not a conclusion of mine. That's a finding of the court that Twitter is not, a, not, not acting as a government entity. Facebook's not acting as a government entity. Any other social media platform that allows you to speak is not acting as a state actor, as a government entity. Your local pub or public house, as they say in Downton Abbey, which I'm watching now, those places, just because they are hosts of speech, just because you have a concert venue where someone can come and sing a song, just because uh, they have an open mic night and someone can come and stand up on the mic and, and, and rant and rave about something or sing a song or do a poem or whatever does not make them a government actor. Just because they are a host of speech does not make them a state actor. We've gone over this in the Marsh v. Alabama case, which I'll make a link to there for you as well. Marsh v. Alabama is where a company owned a town and because they owned a town, they ran everything. They ran the postal service. They ran the sidewalks. They had regulations for everything privately that were all owned by the company. And so what happens if you as a citizen go to exercise a right that is yours as, as a citizen, but you do so in a company town? Are, are you on private property now and no government regulation applies to you whatsoever, like the First Amendment? No. Once the company town exercises sufficient control over the area that it, that becomes like a town and you can you can watch the marsh v alabama video about it it does become subject to some basic municipality regulations and this is actually quite normal you might see many municipalities around the country probably the vast majority of them are incorporated are business entities that have become 
towns that govern the town. And that means that they still have to observe the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Third Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment. They have to observe the Constitution and its amendments. Twitter is not a town. Twitter is not a company town. Twitter does not exercise a level of control over your speech and everything else. Roads, sewers, water, electricity, that they become a company town. They're just a host of speech like a pub is, like a bar, like a concert venue is. And those things, they can have a state actor in there. You can have the Four Seasons landscaping hosting Rudy Giuliani's speech. That doesn't mean Four Seasons Landscaping is a company town or is a state actor. But Maria Rutenberg really, really, really wants it to be. So they are asking for permission to file a second amended complaint to address the issues that were dismissed in the first amended complaint. Plaintiff seeks leave to amend to add allegations sufficient to establish the same as other courts have held that the area in which plaintiff tried to comment was a designated public forum. I don't know what other courts have, have held this. Usually when us lawyers are doing legal drafting, if I was to make a claim like other courts have held, there would be a citation here. There would be a at least a footnote and then down at the bottom here you would have a whole bunch of of citations to all these courts that said that they were a designated public forum. Also, I'm not sure that designated public forum is a legal terminology yet. Uh, we would say state actor, but okay. Um, designated public forum seems to be the language people use these days. So they claim that Twitter acted under color of law when it blocked Maria Rutenberg, but Maria Rutenberg wasn't blocked. Trump was blocked because his account was used in violation of the terms of service of Twitter, which we can debate all day whether Twitter appropriately or fairly applied that terms of service, but they do have the right to have a terms of service and apply it. That's not really up for dispute at all. On April 9th, the court dismissed the amended complaint because plaintiff did not sufficiently allege that the space where she tried to comment was a designated public forum, quote, instead, Rutenberg points to a supposed delegation of authority from former President Trump to operate what she contends as a public forum. The court should allow plaintiff to file the proposed second amended complaint because adding allegations sufficient to establish that the space where she tried to comment was a designated public forum would convey subject matter jurisdiction over the case. They continue, this case, according to plaintiff, is a mirror image of night because both of the plaintiffs in both cases were blocked from the same area, the space of commenting on Trump's tweets, which must be analyzed separately from Twitter as a whole. And here's where I have a major disagreement with the plaintiff, because let's go back to our pub example or concert venue example. Let's say that a arena hosts Trump and then Trump says, Maria Rutenberg, you're not allowed in here. That might be illegal under Knight First Amendment Institute and its progenitors. That's not what's happening here. This is where the arena says, sorry, we don't want to host Donald Trump. And then Maria Rutenberg comes in and says, if you had hosted Donald Trump, I would have been able to come and attend. And so you're blocking me from attending the arena where Donald Trump was wanted to speak. And that you're a state actor somehow because of that. So no, that's not the same thing. The former president presented his Twitter account as being a presidential account as opposed to a personal account and used the account to take actions that can only be taken by a president. Sure, he had used his personal account to make governmental level proclamations. He had done state business with his account. Sure. For example, the former president's Twitter account was used in the course of the appointment and removal of officers, etc. They go into the Knight v. Trump litigation, 
Seven users and the Knight First Amendment Institute sued President Trump. The Southern District of New York held the blocking was illegal, arbitrary censorship in a designated public forum. The Second Circuit affirmed and denied rehearing on banc. The Supreme Court granted certiorari and vacated the opinion due to the mootness doctrine. The presidential administration had changed. Therefore, the former president's account was no longer a designated public forum in that direction. But to me, this directionality had everything. It was the distinction that makes the difference. It had everything to do with it. You needed to have the directionality. If Ken Paxton, the attorney general from Texas, blocks people on Twitter who are constituents, then he's probably in violation of the Knight First Amendment Institute case. But is the Knight First Amendment Institute case even really precedential anymore since the Supreme Court vacated it as moot? I'm not sure that it even works that way. So now Knight First Amendment Institute has filed a new case against Ken Paxton for doing basically the same thing. And now here's where I believe the plaintiff goes sideways and no longer follows the actual precedent. They say that courts have followed Knight. Plaintiff is saying that the account is akin to a digital town hall with the president speaking and citizens responding to him and engaging with one another about his statements. But where's the town hall being hosted? Is it being hosted by a government entity? Is Twitter a government owned town hall? Or is Twitter a privately owned building or arena or entity? It is a privately owned one, and that's the distinction that makes the difference. So rather than drag this out more and more and more, because the motion for the second amended complaint continues to make the same mistake over and over again of conflating these two directions as being meaningless, let's see how the court handles it instead. So this is the order denying the motion for the second amended complaint. The court previously ordered this case dismissed for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. Plaintiff Maria Rotenberg subsequently filed a motion requesting a second amended complaint. Having reviewed the party's briefing, the court denies the motion. Federal Rule Civil Procedure 15 provides that a trial court shall freely give leave when justice so requires, but a court may exercise its discretion to deny leave to amend due to undue delay, bad faith, dilatory motive, repeated failure to cure deficiencies, undue prejudice, and futility of amendment. Leave to amend need not be given if a complaint as amended is still subject to dismissal. Here, Rutenberg's proposed amendments do not address the court's analysis from the prior order dismissing this case for lack of subject matter jurisdiction and are thus futile. Instead, these new allegations consist of additional details of Twitter, former President Donald Trump and his Twitter account, Rutenberg's Twitter usage, and a discussion of the Second Circuit case, Knight First Amendment Institute v. Trump. These proposed amendments do not alter, let alone address, the court's prior determination that Twitter is not a state actor and is not exercising any sovereign state authority. Again, simply put, Rutenberg cannot transform Twitter into a state actor based on an allegation that the company simply administered former President Trump's account, which is all that is alleged in the amended complaint. In light of these defects, Rotenberg's proposed amendments are futile and do not warrant the granting of this motion. Accordingly, the motion for leave to file a second amended complaint is denied. The clerk of court is directed to enter judgment consistent with the disposition of this order and the prior order. And this is May 28th, just a couple days ago. And so the judge has issued that judgment. The court having dismissed the case for lack of subject matter jurisdiction, it is ordered a judge and decreed that in compliance with the court's prior orders, this matter is dismissed for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. Judgment is entered in favor of defendant Twitter and against plaintiff Maria Rotenberg. Rotenberg shall take nothing by the complaint herein. The clerk of the court shall enter this judgment and close the matter. And that is Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers, United States District Judge for the Northern District of California. And that's the right result. There isn't any meritorious dispute to this. You can say the words, Twitter should be a designated public forum, but that doesn't make it true. You have to go back to the reasoning of what a designated public forum or state actor is for and why, what the requirements are, what the scope is, is for having a company town or having something turned into state action. And Twitter is not it. Facebook is not it. 
I can point back to the Masterpiece Cake case, which didn't exactly say that cake makers are not designated public forums. It's not quite on point. I'll, I'll, I'll make that legal disclaimer right away. But the idea, the concept, the philosophy behind the Masterpiece Cake case is that the cake maker was a private entity and therefore can decide which customers they serve. Twitter is deciding which customers it serves, and it's even doing so with a terms of service or criteria for who gets disconnected, who gets terminated, whose account gets suspended, and whose doesn't. And so they waited a very long time. And when Twitter privately felt that President Trump, former President Trump's Twitter account crossed the line, they eventually suspended the account. That's the same thing as the cake maker in Masterpiece Cake denying service to people he did not want to serve. Certainly there is a level where you can't deny service based on certain criteria. And the Masterpiece Cake case was about where is that line and the Supreme Court clarified that that level of private entity is allowed to discriminate even against people based on their prote normally protected traits. Their protected class is how we would say it in the law. Twitter, same thing. The former president wasn't suspended because of his race, gender, or sexual, sexual orientation. He was suspended because of the content he chose to tweet, and that content violated Twitter's terms of service, according to Twitter. We don't have to agree that this the content did or did not violate the terms of service. It's not up to us, it's up to Twitter. We can certainly disagree, we can agree to disagree over whether they should have terminated his account, but there is no meritorious dispute to Twitter being a private actor or a government actor. They are not a government actor simply because they hosted the president's Twitter account. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. This channel would not exist without your support on patreon.com slash ljfrench, sponsors.com slash law, float plane subscriptions, and YouTube memberships. Special thanks in the month of June to the following supporters, Joe Tyson, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hightoff, Ugly Grill, Rudolph Bescher Jr., Torpedon, Brandon Abel, Shadow Tycho, Earthbound Star, RDH Dragon, and Pure Magma. And thank you to the rest of our supporters scrolling on the screen in front of you. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I love you all. I'll see you in the videos. Have a great week. Bye. Who needs lawnmowers? I don't know. Can we just get some geese? Honk, 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 honk. <laughs> Are you filming? <laughs> so I just honked on your video. <laughs>